Ammonium formate is the salt that forms when formic acid reacts with ammonia. It has a few common uses, but it's most commonly used in reduction reactions. I don't really want to get into the details, but the basic definition of a reduction is the addition of electrons. The two main ways ammonium formate is used to reduce things is either by using a palladium catalyst or by the Leuchart reaction. Palladium is actually pretty cool, but unfortunately I don't really have the budget for it. So I used it in the Leuchart reaction instead. The Leuchart reaction is a little different than the palladium reaction because this one isn't just a reduction, it's a reductive amination. This is a pretty nifty reaction and I plan to use it on vanillin to make vanillyl amine. Without going into too much detail, we're swapping this double bonded oxygen with a single bonded nitrogen. Unfortunately, I tried this a few times with different sources of vanillin and different sources of ammonium formate, and each time I didn't get vanillyl amine. When I made the ammonium formate, I had a specific use in mind and that was for the vanillin, but because I didn't work out, I don't have a specific use anymore. I'm sure I'll find a use for it in the future though, because the Leuchart reaction is pretty useful and I'm sure I'll find something that I can use it on. So for this experiment, we'll only need two ingredients, formic acid and ammonium carbonate. Formic acid is actually used by beekeepers to get rid of mites, so it's not very hard to obtain. I bought my formic acid off eBay and I bought my ammonium carbonate from the science company. The ammonium carbonate could just as easily be purchased from eBay though. Ammonium carbonate is also known as baker's ammonia and it's not supposed to be hard to find. I wasn't able to find it in any stores around where I lived, but maybe you'll have better luck. I start out by weighing 101.7 grams of ammonium carbonate. I then moved on to the formic acid and I weighed out 110 grams. The formic acid that I used was 90 to 92%, so I made my calculations based on the assumption that it was 90%. I did this because we want to work with a slight excess of formic acid anyway. If we use a slight excess of formic acid, we will consume all of the ammonium carbonate. After we react these two things, there'll be a lot of excess water that we need to get rid of, and we have to boil it away. When we do this, we'll also boil away the slight excess of formic acid. So this reaction is pretty simple. We just get our beaker full of ammonium carbonate and we just slowly add formic acid to it. You can see that immediately when it's added, there's a pretty vigorous reaction. For this reason, it's important to add it slowly because you don't want an overflow. In hindsight, it would simply be way smarter to do the reaction in a larger beaker. I wanted to get away with using the smallest beaker possible, but I ended up having to switch beakers anyway, so I would actually suggest starting with a larger one. I keep adding the formic acid slowly and using a glass stir rod to break up any chunks that form. What we're doing here is a neutralization reaction where ammonium carbonate is reacting with formic acid to produce ammonium formate, CO2, and water. The ammonium formate when it's produced dissolves into the water because it's extremely soluble, but the CO2 escapes as a gas. So I keep repeating the same cycle of adding formic acid waiting for the reaction to die down a little bit and then breaking up chunks with my glass stir rod. After doing this for a while, we'll eventually get to a point where it's a lot more liquidy. Now a stir bar will actually be useful, so I add one. With the mixture stirring, I slowly add the rest of the formic acid. As we add more and more formic acid, the solution should get clearer and clearer. Eventually the solution should be as clear as water. If it isn't, just keep adding small drops of formic acid until it totally clears up. Now we have to boil away the water to reduce the volume, so to do this I transfer it to a larger beaker. Like I said earlier, it's better just to start with a larger beaker. The other beaker is washed with a little bit of distilled water just to clean out any ammonium formate that might be left behind. I then put in a large stir bar and we're ready to go. I crank up the heat, but I don't bring it to a full boil because I don't want it to be too violent. I don't remember how long it took, but it didn't take that long. It got to a point where the solution started to look pretty thick. When the volume got low, I added a thermometer and I monitored the temperature. Ammonium formate melts at 116 C, so we have to make sure we don't overheat it. I would keep the temperature between 115 and 120 degrees Celsius for a while. 
At this temperature, both the water and the formic acid should be boiled off. It's important to monitor the temperature and make sure it doesn't get too hot because ammonium formate decomposes into formamide. The formamide itself is toxic, but if it gets heated even more, it can form hydrogen cyanide gas. As long as the temperature is kept below, let's say 130 C, there's absolutely no risk of this. After something like 30 minutes at 120 C, I took it off and let it cool. When it's still hot, I can swirl the beaker around and you can see it's still quite liquidy. But eventually, as it cools, the ammonium formate will crystallize. Just to fully crystallize everything, I placed it in a freezer. Afterwards, I broke up the clump of ammonium formate. It was then transferred to a vacuum Buchner funnel to dry it. As I pull air through the funnel, you can see excess water dripping out the bottom. I keep pulling air through until this dripping more or less stops. I scraped out all of the salt from the Buchner funnel and this is the final yield. Based on the amount of ammonium carbonate used, the yield should be quantitative. Or in other words, it should be pretty much 100%. We can't really weigh it properly though because it's still going to be wet. You could in theory leave it out to air dry, but it still probably won't get fully dry. I just opted to store it as it was, and I'll use it even though it's a little bit wet. It might have a little bit of a formic acid smell, but that's okay. The amount present is small, and besides, when you carry out a reaction and you heat it, it breaks down into formic acid and ammonia anyway, which is part of the mechanism. I transferred everything to a bottle for storage. And that's really it for ammonium formate. I don't have an example reaction to show you guys. In the future though, I do plan to do a Leucart reaction, so the time will come that the ammonium formate is used. For now though, that's all I really have to say, and I'll see you on the next one. Again, here's a list of the videos that I'm currently editing and future videos I plan to film. In the videos being edited category, you can vote for the one that you want me to publish next, and in the future video category, you can vote for the one that you want me to film next. Also, if you're feeling generous, please donate to my Patreon account, because with a bigger budget per video, I can do more things. Also, instead of stockpiling videos, I've decided I'm going to publish them as soon as I edit them, so in the next month or so, there's going to be a lot of videos coming out. On my Patreon, I also added a milestone, and if we get to $250 per video, I'll commit to doing videos for at least six months.